Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Remember, subscribe is the vibe. Your boys on the road to 20K. Humbly. Humbly. Man, we got TikToker faces life in prison after this. And like I always say in every last one of my videos, it, it, it be like freedom be itching ya. You know what I mean? Like this, this ain't wrong with freedom. We want to go test being incarcerated. This is Courtly Clenny, and she went from making $1.8 million a year to now facing life in prison. This is such a wild story, and it has so many twists and turns, but it all starts when the police were called to an apartment complex in April of 2022 in Miami. This is where the police found a very frantic Courtney, and they asked, what's going on? And this is what she said. I, I just, I don't want, I want to be like, I don't want to be like exonerated, I guess. It's like anything wrong. And, and I want oh, I know the shorty. This is the shorty that killed her boyfriend. I want a restraining order against Christian Zimzelli. I want to be exonerated of any wrongdoing sounds very off right away. And clearly, something was massively off because just one day later, she ended the life of her boyfriend. Now, if it was intentional that's or in self-defense, that's up for a jury to decide. But what we know is Courtney was a TikToker, Instagram, and OF model. And at the time, she was apparently living with this boyfriend in Miami. But then some argument broke out and allegedly he was there without her permission. The police were then called and this is what unfolded. What, you know, you want to get to your, to talk. I'm not you trying to get into your apartment. Yes. Yes, okay. Okay, but you time told me out, I was time out, time out. Let me talk, okay. I feel very like... What's your name, Courtney? Yes. Okay, Courtney. Why do you have to make anything, man? Like, I'm trying to, like... Well, yeah, let it be interesting. Like we're trying to like talk. Thing. So, you just want to get back in your apartment. Unfortunately, he can be here in the property. That is totally fine. Okay. So he's, then, been, he's been literally so sleeping we're, in my living room without this. permission. We're going to do right. this. We're going to find him so he can leave the property and yeah. you get back to your apartment. What else do you need? I was told I was going to get a chance to speak. Go ahead. Go ahead, Courtney. Okay. What's going on? Good turn. Are you going to listen? Are you going to listen? Are you listening? Go ahead. Say something wrong. Yes. Huh? Yes, they're all three here. So the cops try to help with the problem, but then she gets upset because they're not listening to her. So when they finally are just quiet to listen to her, she then starts talking to what it seems like her dad on the phone. This interaction's about to get a whole lot more confusing, but first, when you're injured, you deserve the best representation because, oh. hey, your serious injury yeah, could be I, I worth millions crime, of dollars. Brother. Insurance companies often lowball uh, clients' uh, claims, really which is why today's crime, sponsor, Morgan & Morgan, can help. Because Morgan & Morgan will fight to get you the of what we saw earlier. So what do you what do you what do you want to say? I, I just I don't want I want to be like I'm gonna be like Oh yeah, I know about her. I know about her. she was actually the abusive one in the relationship. Now, now don't get like I'm pretty sure in top and this is how it be in toxic relationships. Like you guys get so used to putting your hands on one another, y'all don't even understand. You guys are crossing that threshold between what's legal and what's not. Um, but she was actually the abuser. First, seventy-five North West for a second. Seventy-five North West. Is she already on the way? We have what no idea. Mean? We don't even know how it looks we like. We don't even know who it is. How do we know that? So you question it. I need a restraining order against him. So she wanted the cops to go get the restraining order for her rather than go to the police station herself and get it done. She also made it extremely clear that she wanted to be first with a little bit of a wild look in her eye. Now that could be just to control the narrative, but then she ends her boyfriend's life the very next day. And then the interesting thing about this case is she wasn't arrested then. She wasn't arrested until four months later at a rehab in Hawaii. Because in a USA Today article, it states that Clenny told authorities she armed herself with a knife because Obam Selly pushed her and thrown her to the floor. She admitted to causing injuries, but gave several inconsistent accounts about what happened. Police could not verify any injuries Clenny said that she sustained, according to the warrant. While certainly not one-sided, the evidence shows there were prior incidents of Clenny being physically violent. The warrant reads, in trying to explain her actions that day to the police, Clenny stated, I do not think this was, I don't know, I really don't know if this was justified. Hey, no. Authorities concluded Clenny acted without justification in an immediately dangerous act demonstrating a depraved mind without regard for human life. Clenny's Miami defense lawyer, Frank Prieto, told the Miami Herald he was completely shocked to learn of the arrest. He said Clenny was in Hawaii for rehabilitation for substance abuse and post-traumatic stress disorder and maintains his client acted in self-defense and Obam Sally's death was justified. We were cooperating with the investigation and offered to voluntarily surrender her if she was charged. Prieto told the outlet we look forward to clear
clearing her name in court. So with that in mind, she is currently facing life in prison. And with all the evidence coming forward of all of her terrible behavior, that's going to be quite the uphill battle for them. Now, there's been multiple videos released of her hitting the same guy. And she's also been arrested for battery before against the same guy in Las Vegas. And then on top of that, you have this video of her hitting the same guy in Aspen while they were on vacation. And yep. then there's two mm -hmm. more things that came out of complete left field with this story. The first one being her parents were arrested for accessing the victim's laptop. And they also just released why as Clenny's father, Kim, entered the couple's apartment to clear out his daughter's things, but he also took the victim's laptop. This laptop apparently had all the victim's information, including his iCloud, messages, photos, videos, and so on. And this laptop hadn't been taken by the police. So the court documents alleged that he tried to get into the laptop before handing it over to the victim's family. And because of this, Courtney is now also facing computer crime charges. But the parents claim that this was a shared computer between her daughter and the victim. So who knows? Also, could it be a simple mistake? I don't know. Well, the parents, they claim that her daughter and the victim shared that laptop. That's why they did so. Then the story takes a laughably stupid turn because apparently she approached an 18 year old and asked him to walk her home. When the teenager agreed to walk her home, she ended up getting them to sit down on a bench. This is where she apparently tried to kiss him. And when he said no, she started freaking out at him and then ended up screaming at him saying she was going to burn his house down because she was simply rejected. The teenager was then understandably freaked out, so he called his That's father. Awesome. His father showed up pretty quickly, and this is where she starts smacking the father because the son called his father to show up and have his back. So uh, clearly, a lot of things were off here. And what makes this worse is this is after she ended the life of her boyfriend. Not before, right. after. But after she started smacking the father, both the son and the father just left. And I guess simply assume this is just some insane, intoxicated woman. And in a recent update, another friend of the couple she came out and stated, hey, I've seen the woman hit the man multiple times, but I've never seen the man hit the woman. And what's also new to the story is that Courtney's parents were recently interviewed by TMZ. And here they say if her daughter didn't do that, it would have been her funeral. So here's a clip of that. Her funeral we were talking about, it would have been the other way around for sure. I don't remember exactly how she said it, but she, she, you know, just, I knew that he had been injured. I was on the phone with my mom. It's right in there. Like it's covered in blood. Cause I was on it the was phone a life and death situation. So she felt she had no choice but to stab her boyfriend at all. I just knew that if he was injured at all, she needed to call 911 and she did. Well, either way, it's in the hands of a jury right now. Overall, it is just an extremely so depressing crazy. story, no matter how you look at it. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens from here on out. But as you've noticed from this video, I've been traveling a lot this week, hence why I filmed half- I ain't going front, bro. Like, I've seen this case to a certain extent, bro. She was surprised when the man had died. Like, there's actually footages of her in the, um, getting interrogated and like stuttering and just befuddled with just information, bro. All that is very sketchy, man. But but anyways, this was TikToker faces life in prison after this. We'll see if she gets convicted, though. But you already know how the system goes, bro. Especially when the victim black. But all right, I'm going to holler at you guys in the next video, man. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Hit the like and subscribe button for more content. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. I'm out.